We're sat on the set for HBO's Rome series, and I'm with Jamie Ferguson, the lead battle designer on Total War Rome 2. How's it going? It's going very well, thank you very much. It's very hot, isn't it? It is very, very, very hot. <laughs> Suffering a little. <laughs> <laughs> so can you tell me where in, in the history of Rome does the game start? Where is it set? Okay, well, we start in 272 uh, BC uh, with Rome just beginning its conquest of uh, the peninsula of Italy and uh, from that point on it's up to the player how things progress. It's up to them where they go, whether they go to the east and start destroying the Greeks and then the Persians and the Egyptians or whether they head north and destroy the Gauls and the Germans and the Britons. It's entirely up to them. Or if they fancy doing something completely different they can actually play the Carthaginians or play the Egyptians or maybe play the Gauls or the Britons themselves. Uh, how many different factions are available out of the box? Uh, out of the box we have uh, nine and uh, we have a pre-order DLC that allows you to um, get the Greek city-states which includes Sparta, Epirus and uh, Athens. Okay, talking about the game itself, um, one of the things that you've got in Rome 2 is you've integrated the naval battles mm. into into the uh, into the to the battles themselves. Yeah. Um, what kind of challenges has that presented? Uh, it's actually been quite an interesting challenge, to say the least. Um, you know, it, we found in the end that the best approach was actually just to take what we do with the land battles and actually take that and just adapt it in terms of uh, kind of uh, naval combat. So, for anybody who's played any of our previous games, they should find it pretty easy to pick up and if you've never played you know a kind of RTS game before it should it, it should still be pretty easy we have you know kind of control mechanisms that are very easy you know in terms of drag select and uh, WASD kind of keyboard controls and do you it can be uh, quite tricky kind of controlling both sides both mm -hmm. parts of the battle at the same time um, well, yeah, I think we've done a lot to actually Im improve uh, the player's ability to control things. We now have a tactical view that is instantly accessible either from mouse button click uh, or just using your mouse wheel. You can actually zoom straight out to have a complete overview of the entire battlefield. That'll show you the lines of sight of all your units, it'll show you the disposition of all your units and it'll also show you any enemy units that you can see. Um, that will also give you an idea of how things are going. We have a balance of power graph, a balance of power graph that basically allows you to uh, see where the battle's going in terms of whether you're winning or losing. Um, you know who's got the most men on the battlefield at that point in time, and uh, also on top of all of that, we have uh, a lot more kind of feedback that comes from the game itself in terms of the men and you know what they're saying and what they're doing. So as you'll be moving around the battlefield, if you zoom in close enough, you'll start to hear, you know, either panicking or kind of you know men kind of you know cheering and kind of getting excited because they're about to destroy their enemies. How do you kind of allocate kind of t time to uh, working on the individual units themselves? You know, because there's, there's, I know that there's a lot of variety in the different sure. units this time around. How do you balance that against the wider concerns of, of building the epic battles? Well, we've got a huge team working on the game this time. Uh, I've got more than 100 people and uh, they're all working very, very, very hard. Uh, it's been fantastic. Um, I think we've actually managed to achieve more than we've ever done in any previous Total War game and I don't think you, you'll see anything that's suffered from, from that. I think if anything you'll see that you know there's just more polish, more depth and just you know more kind of of everything really uh, and at the same time you know it's a very very accessible experience you know we've tried it out and a few guys who've you know ne never played the Total War game before within 30 seconds they were controlling their units charging in their elephants into the enemy and so on so you know it's pretty good. One of the new features that you've got is um, is the persistent maps, the pers persistent terrains. What was the, 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 the reason behind that design choice? Well, we always felt that it was important that the player have an understanding of where they were in in the world and that um, what, what they look at, at on the campaign map has some bearing and relevance to what they actually see when they go down to a battlefield and that they can actually, as a result of that, choose their battlefield and choose the ground that they're going to fight on. Because uh, that's an actually very important part of uh, tactical warfare and str you know strategy as well. Uh, you know, finding the right place to defend. You know, finding the right place to attack are you know the most important parts of war. Okay, uh, the 
What's the maximum kind of unit capacity now when, when you're talking about the, the, the real-time battles? How, how many troops are we going to have on a battlefield at any one time? Well, um, obviously that depends on the player's machine specs, obviously, but, um, you know, you can have anything up to about, you know, kind of eight or 10,000 men on the battlefield, you know, on a kind of average PC. So uh, it's going to be pretty amazing. With, with regards to the, uh, the turn-based uh, game, uh, how are you kind of making sure that people who prefer the that kind of micromanagement of their uh, of their civilization? How are you kind of tailoring that side of the game to them? Because it's it's a, the the campaign map itself is massive now compared yeah. to what it was before. Yeah, it's, it's it's absolutely huge. I mean, obviously, it stretches all the way from um, Spain in in, in you know, one side to Af Afghanistan on the other, and all the way from Scotland right down to kind of uh, you know the Saudi Arabia and uh, Ethiopia. Um, the result of that is that you get a massive variety of different uh, kind of uh, you know environments to play in, and um, also different cultures to play. So you know how and the way how you play the game very much depends on which kind of culture or which faction you pick. Um, and in terms of how you control that, uh, we now have kind of political systems within each faction, uh, so that you get to do things like you know fight out the politics in the way that Rome fought its politics. You know, in a place like this. Um, also, uh, you get to choose how your soldiers develop and what they, sh what they actually do and how they actually fight. Um, all of these things create a very rich and kind of involving experience. And at the same time, you know, again, it's one of those things about ease of accessibility. You know, we've made sure that we now have a, um, an event system that explains everything that you've done, you know, during your game. It tells you exactly where your position is, you know, at any point when you save the game. Um, and also on top of all of that we have an encyclopedia that explains every single nuance of the game and every single unit in the game and also talks about all the buildings and every element of you know how you play that game. Okay, a two-pronged question for you now. Um, there's, um, with such a, such a huge kind of campaign map, um, how long would, it, would a game last? And are there going to be kind of like the, the full campaign and then maybe a shorter a shorter uh, version. Basically, what, what we found is that um, you know people play at different paces and have, have different amounts of time that they spend with the game. Um, so what we've done is actually give them uh, actual objectives that they can achieve, and those are you know a short or a long objective, or they can go for the global strategy of just trying to you know conquer everything and turn it your own colour. So the length of game is entirely dependent on the player and you know how they approach the game. Do they want to steam through that really quickly, go for a you know, kind of Zerg rush kind of mentality and just try and literally capture as many cities as they possibly can. Obviously there are downsides to that, you get public order issues and so on that may actually slow you down quite a lot. Um, uh, or, you know, you can be a very considered player and you might actually expand very slowly and, you know, kind of plan every single element meticulously. Uh, so, in gameplay terms, you're talking anywhere between, you know, 25 to kind of 90 hours of gameplay. It's really up to the player as how they play the game. Okay, and there's, uh, there's co-op co features this time around as well? Uh, there is co-op uh, multiplayer campaign and there's also uh, 1v1, so you can actually take on your friends head on and actually try and destroy them. Uh, we also have um, a campaign mode, uh, uh, sorry, we have um, an ability within um, the multiplayer games for single battles where you can actually just pick any battlefield that's on the actual campaign map and fight a battle there. Uh, you can fight any of the sieges that are, are available in the game. You can um, fight a coastal battle, you can fight a sea battle, and you do that directly from selecting a point on the campaign map and actually fighting a, a battle from that point. Germania will be free! Yeah!